Let's go, girls. From New York City to Los Angeles, Powered Up with Beck and Franklin is giving women of all ages permission to live the life they've always dreamed of. Why live in black and white when you can choose the brilliance of 3D and Technicolor? Each week, Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin and their high-powered guests will be here to cheer you on, to share their challenges, their successes, and what they've learned along the way. It's all about women supporting women. The stories and practical tips on sex, beauty, money, and so much more are designed to help you reconnect to the powerful woman you are. Fabulous knows no limits. Now it's time for you to expand your boundaries. Here are Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin. Let's go, girls. From New York City to Los Angeles, Powered Up with Beck and Franklin is giving women of all ages permission to live the life they've always dreamed of. Why live in black and white when you can choose the brilliance of 3D and Technicolor? Each week, Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin and their high-powered guests will be here to cheer you on, to share their challenges, their successes, and what they've learned along the way. It's all about women supporting women. The stories and practical tips on sex, beauty, money, and so much more are designed to help you reconnect to the powerful woman you are. Fabulous knows no limits. Now it's time for you to expand your boundaries. Here are Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin. Hey, ladies, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Linda Franklin. And, Linda, we've got some serious snow coming your way. At least there is a lot of snow in Buffalo. I just called my brother, and he's got two feet. So I get all excited, even though I'm in Southern California, for the snow. Well, I'm sure that you're excited, but I'm sure they're not. No, New York is not getting any co- any uh, snow at all. It's really, really cold, and we're going to have this cold snap for another couple of days, but thankfully we're not going to get any snow. But Buffalo is going to get deluged. I mean, western New York always does it. It's a lake effect, and they're they're looking to get maybe close to six feet. Oh, I love it. My brother has like over two and a half feet, and I talked to him just a couple hours ago, so I'm sure it's piling up. Um, But to me, that's so exciting because I just feel that like, you know, when Mother Nature does this thing, she's telling the entire city of Buffalo to take a nap. (laughs) Well, you can look at it that way. The people that have to get around, um, it's, uh, it's tough. It really is. Yeah, I don't know if they got it in Toronto, but, you know, Buffalo, I think, even gets worse than Toronto. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I did a show this morning in Toronto. It's funny that you say that. I did one this morning, and, uh, yep, they were getting snow. So uh, that's, uh, that's always exciting. I mean, it's that type of year, and it's that uh, we're coming into the holiday season. It just doesn't feel like the holidays without snow. Well, then um, I will trade places with you. I will go to Southern California for uh, 10 days, and you, you come and sit in the cold and the snow. I think that that would be a fair exchange. <laughs> That's fair fair enough. I'll come and stay in your New York penthouse. You can stay out here in my California ranch, and we'll both be out. Okay, okay. That's a deal, because uh, I don't like the cold weather. Today it was bone chilling. <laughs> well, I don't either, but um, I am excited um, because we've got two neat guests today, and I don't know if we're going to reach one of them. I'll let you guys know. We have Rashmi Kalani, who's supposed to come in to us from London. Uh, she's at the Kensington Close Hotel right now. So we're trying to patch her into the show. So, you know, hopefully we'll get her. She wrote this great book called The Divine Mother's uh, Speak. And it's all about, um, like, it, like, you know, she's like a channeler that channeled these, like, Egyptian, you know, mystery school things decoded. So, you know, it's right along with our um, spiritual uh, Tuesdays, and then we're going to bring on uh, Jim DeBoer. This is another fun one. He's a dream analyst, and he does dream work. He's very well known for interpreting, and uh, he's Reddit.com, Reddit uh, dream expert. So I can't wait for him. Linda, do you dream? I have really vivid dreams. I can't wait to have him analyze my dreams. 
Yes, I do dream. Uh, quite often, um, I don't remember my dreams, but I think that he can probably help with that. But I have a couple of interesting dream stories that I'll share with him uh, because uh, those, those, those dreams I will never forget because they were the dreams actually, well, one of the dreams actually became a reality. And I kept having the dream and having the dream and having the dream. And then when it actually became a, ra a reality, I didn't have the dream anymore. Oh, interesting. That yeah, is really interesting. Yeah, I want to share that with him and then a, a couple of other incidents. But yes, I, th I think we all dream every night, you know, we're, when, they're, when we're in that REM sleep. But, you know, I don't know if we, so many of us don't remember them. See, and I'm, I'm one of those people that wake up and I think I'm still in the dream. Like it takes me a minute for me to leave like wherever I was in my dream state and come back to like where I am now when I wake up. I wake up sometimes having no idea where I am, which is yeah. really weird because I've lived in this home the longest I've lived anywhere except for when I was a child. But so how long does that last, that not knowing? Until I realize where I am. Like sometimes I'll wake up and go, oh, the window's in the wrong place. And, and then I'll, I'll wake up and go, oh, oh, that's right. I'm in my bedroom in the ranch. Oh, oh, that's right. I'm, you know, and it's not like I travel a lot like I used to. You know, I used to have that sensation when I would go, travel a lot for work and I wasn't sure where I was waking up. But, you know, now I'm pretty safe put, you know, maybe travel once a month. And I have that, like, feeling of, like, oh, I'm back in my body. Oh, I'm back in here. Oh, the, the, that's why the, the window's over there or that's why that's there. Uh, well, very interesting. I believe that sometimes when, you, when you're dreaming um, that, you know, you can be in an alternate u universe, too, and be in another place and then come back to this one. And it's kind of like a jolt to your body when you return to it. So it'll be, yeah, it'll be an interesting segment. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm excited, um, you know, because, you know, some drugs that you take inhibit memory, some drugs, you know, increase memory and you know, when I was taking these fertility drugs to have my kids, I would have these rocking crazy dreams, Linda, just crazy, crazy dreams, you know, that made no sense. And then one dream I had, I saw my kid's head, that Max's head, my firstborn's head, and I could see it clear as day. And, you know, when he was born, I was like, ooh, oh, wow, that was, that was scary. I mean, he looks a lot like me, so it's not that big of a stretch, but... Um, you know, I still have some really vivid, jarring dreams, and I have recurring dreams. Do you have recurring dreams? I used to. I, yeah. I mean, there there are a few that keep coming back from time to time, but not as not as much as I used to. I don't know what's happening within me, but I'm not having that experience quite so much. Hmm. Like I have certain recurring dreams when I'm stressed, or certain recur like. Um, recurring dreams you know when i'm when i'm hungry and i go to bed or i eat something weird like if i eat chocolate i could have really weird dreams it's interesting well yeah well dreams are very interesting and um i think and i'm wondering and maybe we'll find out tonight i mean can you before you go to bed they say if you sort of meditate on what you want to dream about that you can actually kind of manipulate your dreams Oh, now that I've never heard. I've heard that, you know, if you go to bed and you ask to remember your dream to try to, you know, like help your body remember them when you wake up. But I've never heard that you can actually influence your dreams. We'll have to ask him that. Yeah, no. And have you ever um, come up with a, like a great idea in your sleep and then woke up and said, oh, my God, I've got to write that down because that's something I, I really I need right now. Yes, absolutely. I do find a lot of my technology solutions, like I'll be trying to figure out a website or trying to figure out an algorithm or trying to figure out something very, very technical, and then I'll go to sleep, and then I'll pop up, like either awake in the middle of the night or I'll pop awake and go, oh, that's it. It's just so easy. And then I'll go, you know, but I would have had to sleep, and it comes to me in my sleep. So, yeah, I don't know why that happens, but, yes, I've absolutely had that. Well, you know, I guess we're in that subcon you know, subconscious state where our subconscious mind is, is overruling our conscious mind. So there's so much going on in there that's so, such valuable information. And if we just shut, shut down the chatter, uh, well, good things come. Well, I think so. You know, and I, I think our brains are so amazing and so complex. 
you know, like we learned with Dr. Gallenberger, I'm still doing my, you know, abundance and wealth programming and it's, and it's flying like gangbusters. You know, I said, I think earlier that I'm as busy as a cat in a spring barn, you know, chasing mice all over the place and fat and happy. So um, there's something to be said about these spiritual Tuesdays. I know they've been really good for me, Linda. They've been good for me financially, personally, professionally. I'm at peace, you know, after having some of these calls. I think it's really important what we're doing. Yes, I've been in, on this journey for, you know, right now, probably 40 years. And, uh, you know, it, it's a continuous journey. It, it, it doesn't stop. You, you know, you never get to the place where you say, okay, I've, I found it all. I don't need any more. Because you keep finding out these new wonderful things all the time. And um, they are, for me, my foundation. That is so cool. I mean, I think I'm building my foundation, but I'm just enjoying it so much. You know, I, I didn't realize what a whole, it's like the first time I went scuba diving and I, I went down into the deep end of my lake and it was nice and bright, sunny day. And there were so many things to see. And it was so um, overwhelming, but beautiful and wonderful at the same time. And of course it created a lifelong, you know, desire in me to dive. But this is what it makes me think of is like when I first dove in the ocean or first dove deep and saw all that was there. Now I feel like I'm doing that, but in a, in a totally different realm. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. When we when we go inside and, and that's when we truly discover ourselves, what's important and, and a lot of changes happen from there. So I think that these shows are really, really important, uh, not only for us, but I mean, for everybody, you know, we're all one. We're all we're all on this earth trying to figure things out. And the more people that can help us figure this out, um, including ourselves, is the most important one. I think the better. Amen to that, Rasha, Linda. Amen to that. Well, we are going to go to commercial break. I'm Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Linda Franklin, and this is Powered Up Talk Radio. And we are going to welcome Jim DeBoard. He is a mm -hmm. J.M. DeBoard. I'm sorry. J.M. DeBoard, and he is a dream analyst, and he wrote a book called Dreams 1, 2, 3. Remember, interpret and live your dreams. You're not going to want to miss this. You're going to want to come back after the break. We've got lots more Powered Up with Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin after these messages. Sacred Cuisines and Sacred Rituals is a quest, a place, and a feast. Join host Vilasi Venkatachalam every week to explore myths, mystique, old medicine, and brilliant modern solutions through a dazzling kaleidoscope of cuisines, cultures, and cures. This is the place where tribes gather, strangers and familiars, to be memory keepers and makers of our evolving, enduring, evergreen, spoken legacy of wisdom and ingenuity. In Velazzi's words, when we do old things in new ways and new things in old ways, we paint with an inspired palette, weave our own healing traditions, and become our own guru. Velazzi is a troubadour of secret cuisines and sacred rituals. She collects stories of wisdom, in ingenuity and grit. She believes wellness and transformation happen when you stand at the threshold of delight and discovery. She displays her hidden penchant for drama when she leads the safari at the supper club. Her favorite pastime is to extol the marvels of cuisines, cultures and cures to her audience in workplaces, seminars and salons. Her mantra is be your own guru. She is a biochemist, botanist and alchemist who likes to churn delightful, useful things from a brew of art and science, ancient and evolving, old medicine, and new cures. Join Velocity every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, only here on the WooHoo Radio Network. This is Uncommon Sense for Leaders, a forum for exploring leadership from the intellect, the heart, and the spirit. Whether you're a leader now or aspire to be a leader in the future, you owe it to yourself to learn about the big ideas that have shaped the careers of compelling communicators, masters of influence, and highly effective leaders. 
Uncommon Sense for Leaders. Tune in to hear thought-provoking ideas on every aspect of leadership. You can expect dynamic discussions with special guests, quick tips you can apply immediately for better results, and the tools you need to take you from where you are to where you want to be as a leader. Are you ready to crack the code for achieving unprecedented results? Then join the host for Uncommon Sense for Leaders, Catherine Carlisi, every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on the All Business Radio Network. We're back with Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin. Here's more Powered Up with Beck and Franklin. Hey, ladies, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Linda Franklin. And from coast to coast, we've got you covered from New York to Los Angeles. And we're going to dig around in the spiritual realm, Linda. We're going to go in people's brains again this week as part of our Soul Search Tuesdays. And we're going to visit with uh, J.M. DeBoard. He wrote this really super interesting, cool, and fun book called Dreams 1 to B. Remember, Interpret, and Live Your Dreams. So, I'm a big old dreamer, Linda. I can dream almost every night. I can dream while I'm on the radio show. I I just am very prolific in my dreaming. And uh, it's so exciting for me to have uh, somebody come on and analyze, you know, kind of for our free therapy, free spiritual enlightenment hour. Um, Do you dream a lot, Linda? I think we all dream. I just think a lot of us don't remember what we dream. But I think that You know, and JM can certainly clarify that. I think most of us dream every night. It's a, you know, it's a key is, you know, do we remember what we dream? That's exactly right. Oh, JM (laughs) DeBoard. I did. JM DeBoard, welcome to the show. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what makes you qualified to analyze our dreams today? Well, I'll be glad to. Um, I wrote a book called Dreams 123. It's based off of about 20 years of experience with interpreting my own dreams, uh, studying the subject from a lot of different perspectives, and also as a moderator at Reddit Dreams. It's, uh, Reddit.com has a little corner of that universe that's uh, devoted to dreams. I've been a moderator there for uh, about four years now, and I go in and I, uh, I answer questions and interpret dreams. I've interpreted thousands of dreams there, and it's one of the things that encouraged me to write the book because I found that, uh, you know, there's a lot of different books on dream psychology out there and a lot of different approaches to it. And what I find is, is that people read those books or they, they learn about those approaches and they come away and they don't really know much about how to really interpret their own dreams. You know, it's full of information, but there's not a whole lot that's applicable to them and their lives and their dreams. So I wanted to make the subject as easy to understand as possible to take that 20 years of knowledge and experience that I've accumulated and really distill it down into a one, two, three system that says, if you want to understand your dreams and you're starting from square one, this is how you do it. And even people who've got some experience with the subject, they have no problems remembering their dreams. They can kind of get the gist of what their dreams are trying to tell them. They can come in and get some insights from the book too, because I have been doing this for a long time and I do feel like I've got a a pretty good base of knowledge that I'm able to uh, share with with uh, readers and also today with your listeners. JM, what is the advantage to not only remembering your dreams but interpreting your dreams? You know, what if one if one person doesn't remember and therefore can't interpret because he doesn't remember and then the other one remembers but interprets it, how is how is life different for each of those people? Well, you know, you get at the heart of what motivates people to remember their dreams because it requires effort. And if you understand that your dreams have real tangible benefits for you, then you're motivated to do it. Your your dreams can answer questions for you. They can they can resolve issues. They can provide insights. They they talk to you about the health of your mind, your body, your spirit. They provide a larger perspective of yourself. If you think of the conscious side of your mind, the part 
part that you're most familiar with as an iceberg. It's the tip of the iceberg. Your mind and yourself is a much larger thing. Most of it is underneath the surface, meaning it's it's below the surface of your awareness. It's like that 80% of an iceberg that is below the water. So there is a much larger person that's in you. And your dreams are aware of your entire self, your whole self. And what they're doing nightly is they're telling you little stories about yourself that are helping you to understand yourself better. And they do this in a way they speak in symbolism. So by interpreting your dreams and getting familiar with your dream life, you start to recognize the markers along the road. You recognize certain settings that come up and themes in your dreams and scenarios that repeat themselves and characters that come back time and again. And what you're doing when you are analyzing your dreams really is you're analyzing yourself. I, I think that's why dreams have been used as part of psychotherapy for, well, more than 100 years now. You know, Freud's book came out in 1899, Interpretation of dreams and it's been used as therapy and what I think of it more of is the ultimate form of self-help and life coaching because you can go and spend all kinds of money on a guru and have them tell you what they think is best for you in your life but those aren't answers that are coming from deep inside of you your dreams are like that dream are like that life coach that lives inside your head knows you better than anyone else in the universe and can speak to you in a way that really resonates inside of yourself now, Jim, I want to ask you about, and I know this sounds really silly, but but the definition of a dream, because sometimes, and I'll just, I'm going to be honest, I always tell Linda I'm kooky on the air and I, I let it all hang out, but uh -huh. like I have dreams when I sleep, I get that, okay? But then there's some times where I'm like in the bathtub and I'm really, you know, just like in this Zen thing and a whole like movie will unfold in my head, or like it used to happen to me in chemistry and physics all the time. I could sit in chemistry class and, and just be in a completely different dream if you will like and that's right. why i'm asking you like what is the difference between a sleep dream a daydream a bathtub dream a chemistry dream you know are they all dreams or are they different animals really they're all related because your dreams are a side of your mind that it's your imagination at work while you're asleep so while you're awake if you are daydreaming you are using your imagination and what it is is really just more of an active dream as opposed to a nightly or sleep dream that's a little more passive where you're more of an observer and you're kind of going with the flow whereas a daydream might be a little bit more directed there's also a technique that's called active imagination where you take the content from your dreams or some kind of thing that has popped up in your head and you work with it. If it is a character that's from your dreams, you talk to it like it's a person that's in the room with you and you can start to get replies from it. It's it's a part of yourself that has been um, being portrayed. It's, it's, it's brought to life. It's almost like a character on a stage, you know, like an actor on a stage. So really what you're doing, Sandra, is a you have hit upon a natural technique that people go to, you know, gurus and psychologists to learn these kinds of techniques. So, uh, uh, for example, in sports, one of the things you do to you visualize winning the game or giving it your best performance, you you put yourself into the scene. You know, let's say you're a basketball player, you see yourself on the court. You know, the ball in your hand, the other players. You hear the crowd. You you know, you smell the hardwood and the sweat and all that. You know, you fully immerse yourself in the scene and you see yourself performing at your best and that is a way of almost like you could call it creative dreaming because what you're doing is, is you're setting yourself up for that situation that's coming up in your life and creating a pattern down inside of yourself that becomes instinctual you don't have to think about it anymore it's just there you know you mentioned that you've done through uh, you know you would visualize things from like chemistry and physics um, there is a great Indian mathematician um, I can't remember his name right now it has about 15 syllables and it's very hard to pronounce but um he would use his dreams as almost like a blackboard he would before you go to
sleep. And he would then write them down when he woke up. And some of those equations and, and theorems and stuff and proofs that he came up with, it has taken other mathematicians 100 years to figure out what he was doing and to verify that he was correct. So, yeah, the dreams can be almost like a simulated environment. Have you ever watched uh, Star Trek and the, uh, the holodeck? Are you familiar with that? Yeah, yeah. You know, they get these characters, they, they create a simulated environment for themselves, and they go in, and what are they doing? They're, they're helping to work through personal issues. They're trying to answer questions. They're running simulations that are fully immersive simulations in this holographic environment. And you can think of dreams as being like that. They're there to help you to learn, and you can use it actively when you're awake. You can access the holodeck or go to sleep and your dreams will prioritize it for you. Well, and that's very interesting that you bring that up because um, my college roommates used to laugh at me all the time. Like I had this test one time. I, I read Plato's Republic the night before the exam and the paper was due. Uh -huh. And then people were going like, well, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm going to sleep. And I write my paper in my sleep. And I kind of get in this dreamlike state, write my paper. Then I get up and I can knock out, you know, 20 pages and take the test. And that worked for me. It didn't work for anybody else. But they would laugh at me, go, no, you're not. You're just taking a nap. You're just taking a nap and I still do it I had a presentation to do this morning and a proposal to write and I, I woke up at like 4.30 and kind of dreamed it and then got up and knocked it out in a half an hour it's amazing what your mind can do if you just give it a chance yeah, you know, you remind me of um, Edgar Casey when he was a school kid, used to put his books that he, whatever he needed to study for, he would put the book underneath his pillow and he would wake up. I kid you not, he would wake up with the knowledge in the book. It was almost like it was being beamed in your head. Now, people would say impo that's impossible, but a lot of his biographers have, have said that, you know, that that was something that was noted about him. And there were many different people in his life that, that said, yes, Edgar could do that. It's it's something that's it's unusual. I think that's why you got the reaction that you did because yeah, I suppose the people that can't do something like that it almost seems like cheating. But you know, there's a lot of studies that have come out that say that it is really good to sleep on it. Whatever it is, if you've got a big test, a big decision, you know, a big question in your mind or a small question, whatever it is, that if you give yourself a chance to sleep on it, you will come up with better answers the next day. They did this Jim, I've got to cut you off. I got to take us to commercial break. I'm okay. going to hold you to that to sleep on it. I don't want anybody sleeping while we go to commercial okay. break. This is Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin on Powered Up Talk Radio. We're visiting with J.M. DeBoard. He's the author of the book Dreams 123. He's also got a website by the same name, Dreams 123. When we come back from the break, we're going to actually analyze some dreams that Linda and I have had. And we're going to have so much fun. I've had this done before with Jim. I'm so excited. We're going to do this after the break. When you come back, you're not going to want to miss it. More with J.M. DeBoard after the break. We've got lots more powered up with Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin after these messages. This is for all you girls about 42. Tossing pennies into the fountain of youth. Have you heard? The pages of American Patchwork and Quilting Magazine come to life on our new weekly online radio show, American Patchwork and Quilting. Join Pat Sloan, our blogging and quilt designer host, as she talks about the latest trends, ideas, and inspirations. Her guests include quilt pattern designers, authors, quilt shop owners, and our editors, all quilters just like you. Call in with your questions. Get quilting tips from industry experts. Learn about free patterns. Hear behind-the-scenes stories from our magazines, American Patchwork and Quilting, Quilt Sampler, and Quilts and More. Get the scoop on free stuff and find out more about the best independent quilt shops in North America. To listen to a live show, tune in Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Just log on to allpeoplequilt.com slash radio. To hear past shows, go to iTunes and search for American Patchwork and Quilting Radio. 
We hope you'll join us because we know that quilting changes everything. Secret Cuisines and Sacred Rituals is a quest, a place, and a feast. Join host Vilasi Venkatachalam every week to explore myths, mystique, old medicine, and brilliant modern solutions through a dazzling kaleidoscope of cuisines, cultures, and cures. This is the place where tribes gather, strangers and familiars, to be memory keepers and makers of our evolving, enduring, evergreen, spoken legacy of wisdom and ingenuity. In Velasi's words, when we do old things in new ways and new things in old ways, we paint with an inspired palette, weave our own healing traditions, and become our own guru. Velasi is a troubadour of secret cuisines and sacred rituals. She collects stories of wisdom, ingenuity, and grit. She believes wellness and transformation happen when you stand at the threshold of delight and discovery. She displays her hidden penchant for drama when she leads the safari at the supper club. Her favorite pastime is to extol the marvels of cuisines, cultures, and cures. To her audience in workplaces, seminars, and salons, her mantra is, be your own guru. She is a biochemist, botanist, and alchemist who likes to churn delightful, useful things from a brew of art and science, ancient and evolving, old medicine and new cures. Join Velocity every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, only here on the WooHoo Radio Network. We're back with Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin. Here's some more Powered Up with Beck and Franklin. This is for all you girls. Hey, ladies, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Linda Franklin, and this is Powered Up Talk Radio. And for those of you that missed the first half of the show, you can find us on iTunes under Powered Up Talk Radio. You can find us at PoweredUpTalkRadio.com. You can go to our host station, Toginet, that's T-O-G-I-N-E-T dot com, and look up our show, Powered Up Talk Radio. We've got a couple hundred hours of outstanding program for women in your 40s, 50s, 60s. This is part of our spirituality series, our Spiritual Tuesdays, and we are visiting with J.M. DeBoard. Now, when we went to break, we're talking a little bit about uh, sleeping on it, you know, the definition of dreams. And Linda, you had a question for J.M. Yeah, um, you know, you, Sandra, you always talk about, you know, the mind and the brain and, and, and all of that. And, and um, I'm thinking that when you're dreaming, and these are spiritual Tuesdays, I think the key to getting the information that we want uh, from our dreams is turning off that brain, turning off that mind, and then going to another place, because I think it's the other place that brings you the information that we're seeking. Can, do, we, do you agree with that? Do you want is me to take that one? For JM? Yeah, JM, yeah, yeah that's that. for you, JM. Oh, okay, hi, Linda. Um, yes, um, you know, your mind is constantly busy. And unless you're meditating or in some kind of peaceful state, you... You know, and especially people who've got busy lives, you know, they, they've got careers, they've got family, they've got home, you know, they have all these obligations and things come at them constantly during the day. And in your sleep, when you're dreaming, or if you're in a similar state, like when you're in a, a meditation, it's an opportunity to slow your mind down and really listen. And you, you listen instead of talk. And I don't mean just talking verbally. I mean the talking that goes on in your head all the time. So, yes, you, I think it's, it's vitally important to have that time to power down, to quiet your mind. If you can't do it during the day, you're too busy or for whatever reason you don't get that quiet time, then your dreams, what I found is, is that they act as a sort of compensation. So the busier you are and the more active you are during the day and the more that your mind is busy during the day, the more that your dreams are going to help you to reflect on the things that you might be missing. They, they help you to realize what's going on underneath the surface. They, they make you aware of things that you might not be aware of. I wanted to give a real quick example of this. There was a mother with a young son who dreamed that there was a little white pill that was underneath her couch. And she realized in the dream that that pill 
could be harmful to her son. I mean, she had like a toddler, you know, the crawling stage. And then, you know, the kid's going to be around on the carpet and stuff, and they're going to think, well, you know, she doesn't want – in the dream, she's actually in kind of a panic. So she wakes up in the morning. She goes downstairs to her couch. She looks underneath the little flap, and what does she see? There was a little white pill there that was a powerful sedative, which for an adult would make him drowsy, but for a 15-pound child or a 20-pound child could be deadly. These are just one of the ways that your dreams make you aware of things that maybe got past your attention during the day. She probably had seen that pill out of the corner of her eye when she was busy picking up her purse and trying to get the kid together so that they can go out to the grocery store or something like that. She sees it out of the corner of her eye, but she misses it. It's something it doesn't register on her mind. So when she's quiet and she's asleep, her dreams give her the opportunity to get that information to her and say, hey, this is important. So I hope that answers your question, Linda. Well, and I have a question to add on top of that, and then Linda has a question. We're just going to like – we're going to just pepper you with questions right hey, now. Hey, great. Yeah. Um, okay. When I have a super, super busy day, you know, and I pop between like programming and, and then broadcasting and writing and, and speaking, and I then I have two kids, and I'm, I'm, I'm going 1,000 miles an hour some days. Yes. When I go to bed at night, I wake up and I feel like I had a full work day in my head. Yeah. And – I have all these solutions. You know, I get to work and it's like, oh, yeah, I know how to do this. Blah, 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 blah. Did my brain have a full work day that night? Because that's what it felt like. Yeah, it's reviewing everything from your day. And it's also anticipating what's coming up in the day ahead. You know, that we were talking just before the break about a study where they had people learn some new information and they broke them into two groups. One group went to sleep for a couple of hours and then got up and were tested on the information. The other group stayed awake and then took the same test. And what they found was is that the group that had a chance to sleep on it performed better on the test. So your brain does give you – your dreams give you an opportunity to review information and to learn from it. Um, Elias Howell invented the sewing machine. He was working – it was a real bad design problem. He couldn't figure it out. He went to sleep and he dreamed that there was a group of natives who were carrying spears. They had had him surrounded and they were thrusting the spears at him. And what he noticed is, is that the pointy end of the stick was where there was an eyelet on it. And it helped him to realize that the design problem, the dream was actually giving him the solution that he'd been seeking while he was awake and couldn't figure out. The design, by putting the eyelet down towards the tip of the needle, it solved that problem. And he went on to be, you know, now everybody knows who Elias Howe is. Well, I don't want to say everybody, but, you know, he's a famous inventor. Whereas if he wouldn't have had that dream or didn't remember it and didn't pay attention to it and realize what it was trying to tell him, then somebody else would have come up with that invention and they would be getting the credit for it today. Cool. Okay. I have another Yep, I have another question. Now, this one may, Charlotte. you know, somebody may have never asked you this kind of question, but I've got to. Um, okay. When we're sleeping, do you think it's possible to travel to alternate universes um, and then as we wake up, come back? Because sometimes you come back and or you wake up and you're, you know, you're actually jolting because it's like, oh, my God, like Sandra had said before, where am I? Oh, it takes me a minute to sort of get back into my body. Sure. But and if that's the, if that is possible, then maybe your example of the mom with the, the the kid with the pill underneath the sofa, maybe she didn't catch it out of the corner of her eye when she was walking around. Maybe she saw that in sort of an alternate universe and came back to help her so her kid wouldn't get into trouble. Or, you know, tapping into the knowledge of her higher self, whatever that is. You know, uh, Edgar Casey said that there is a spiritual version of you which exists in – call it a parallel universe, another dimension in heaven or, you know, whatever terminology that you want to use. And that while you're asleep and dreaming that you can access that higher self. Now, in my experience, most dreams are about everyday concerns. They're mostly painted from your emotional landscape. But I have found a, shall we say, a small percentage of dreams that 
access you into something much larger than yourself. Uh, I have known people who have had direct experiences of what you might call God or their, you know, like a, a, a Muhammad or a Jesus or a Buddha, you know, like some kind of prophet type of character, and it changed their lives. I had one of those dreams about 15 years ago, and I tell you, it really it changed me in ways that no other amount of experience could have. You know, it was like a lifetime worth of going to church and studying scripture, and I got it in one scene of one dream, and it was so powerful and so personal that it really changed me in many ways. Now, I don't know about parallel universes, but I do know that your dreams can give you out-of-body experiences where your consciousness detaches from your body and it is able to roam around, whether it is in our material world. Um, There have been lucid dreamers, uh, people who are very advanced in dream work, and also shamanic dreamers who have had experiences where they can consciously disconnect from their bodies and then go and visit. I know a shaman who does dream healing. He goes to people who are part of, you know, call them his patients, his his clients, you know, his people, whatever you want to call them. He will go during his dreams. He will disconnect from his body. He will go and visit them. He will look inside their bodies and see what they need. And then he'll call on the spirits to deliver it for them. So I would call that an out of body experience, um, at least, you know, and whether or not you can go to other places. I've known people who had fantastic dreams where they they said they went to heaven and they visited the big guy, you know, or girl, you know, they, they had, (laughs) um, they, they had really profound and incredible experiences, but here's the thing is when you have those kinds of dreams is sometimes it is symbolism for something, you know, for instance, visiting a parallel universe could mean seeing yourself from a different perspective. It could be a side of yourself that is kind of living in parallel with your own life. But while your ego and your, you know, your personality is out front, sort of living your life day to day and all of its activities, there's another part of yourself that's sitting back that's more of an observer. It's more passive about it, but it's almost like another person that's living your life along with you. So your dreams could use the idea of a parallel universe to symbolize something like that. Terrific. Thank you for that explanation. Yeah, it's, it's, it's whatever it is, it's awesome. Yeah, it what really we're is. capable of doing. Well, and you mentioned, you know, like the look at lucid dreams or you, you mentioned that dream healing that's been around since the ancient Greeks. That's not anything new. I mean, I hate to like bust the people's bubble that are listening today, but this, they all say this stuff is new wave, you know, it's new, this new alternative, whatever, but this stuff goes back thousands of years. And, um, JM, I'd like you to comment on that when we come back from the break. I'm sorry. I was going to ask you a question. I didn't realize I got so excited listening to you that I lost track of time. This is Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin on Powered Up Talk Radio. We are visiting today with J.M. DeBoard. You guys have to get his book. It's so cool. He's as exciting in his book as he is on the air. He's good looking too. He wrote this book called Dreams123. Your website, J.M., is dreams123.com. Is that correct? Uh, dreams123.net and if you go that's my blog and if you go to the dot com you have to put hyphens between the uh, the one two and three so dreams one hyphen two hyphen three dot com excellent excellent or you can just go google your name also works uh, yeah. J as in Jason M as in Michael DeBoard D-E-B-O-R-D when we come back from the break we are going to dig into a couple of uh, dream analysis done by Mr. DeBoard and Linda and I are so excited because uh, I can't wait I can't wait to tell him my dreams come back after the break We've got lots more powered up with Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin after these messages. Have you ever wondered if you're normal or why you feel distant from your partner? Then join us for Sex Talk with Lou with your host, Lou Paget on TogiNet Wednesday nights, 9, 8 central. Do you want to recreate a truly connected relationship or wonder, how do I tell my kids about things? 
Join Lou Paget, one of the world's best-selling authors in the field of sexuality, a certified sex educator and sought-after expert for all media and her renowned expert guests as they discuss anything and everything about sex that impacts our lives and our families' lives. For more on Lou, check out her website, loupaget.com. This is the show where the best experts in the field of sexuality and sexual health can finally give you the answer to that question. Join us for Sex Talk with Lou with your host, Lou Paget, Wednesday nights at 9, 8 central on toginet.com. Mark Lipinski is coming to Toginet. It's Creative Mojo with Mark Lipinski, a live two-hour show Wednesday afternoon starting at 3, 2 central on toginet.com. Creative Mojo. It's fun, entertaining, informative, inspirational, and illuminating. Lipinski has worked on such shows as Oprah, The View, The Joan Rivers Show, and Ricky Lake. He's busy, but he's got the drive to share with Creative Mojo, dedicated to the modern crafter and crafting lifestyle. Dive into the info and enjoy everything from celebs to entertainment news to recipes, quilting and needlework. Knitting, painting, woodworking, Christmas crafts, and so much more. This show boldly encourages you to discover and harness your own creative spirit by living creatively every day. For more on Mark and the show, check out MarkLipinski.com. Don't miss the fun. It's Creative Mojo with Mark Lipinski. Wednesday afternoon starting at 3, 2 central on Toginet.com. Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin. Here's more Powered Up with Beck and Franklin. Hey, ladies, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Linda Franklin, and we are visiting today with dream expert and author of book Dreams 123, J.M. DeBoard. And as promised, I'm going to give some dreams, and so are you, Linda, and we're going to let uh, J.M. analyze them. So, Linda, why don't you give your dream first and let J.M. analyze it, and then I'll go next. Well, it isn't so much an analyzing of it. It's just interesting. Um Many, many years ago, I kept having this recurring dream of I was in my apartment and I would open up a door and there was more room in the apartment Mm. that I didn't even know about. And I would have this dream, oh, maybe twice a month until we actually took two other apartments on our floor, broke through, and then the dream went away. Oh, that's interesting. But I knew that we were going, something was going to happen because I kept having this dream about just opening up this magic door. And I was amazed that there was so much more room than I ever thought there, yeah. there would be. You know, the and, typical symbolism for that is, is that you're discovering new things about yourself. You're kind of opening up new areas of your life. But in your dream, it seems to have been a uh, precognition of what was to come literally. When you were having the dreams, did, did you have plans to you know, to buy the other apartments and to expand? Or was this something that you were totally unaware of at the time? I I think that they kind of came together. You know, I I don't remember because I said it was many years ago, but um, it it really blew my mind that as soon as we kind of did what, you know, broke through and started the new construction, the, the dreams went away. And then um, I, you know, and many, many years ago, I had a, a, a dog and, um, I, when she passed away, I used to dream about her all the time. And it was funny because she was there, but she wasn't there and I'm not feeding her. How could she be alive kind of thing? But I would dream about pineapple all the time until Uh I got Lucy uh, three years ago. And when I got Lucy, I don't dream about pineapple anymore. Oh, wow. Interesting. And the dog's name was pineapple. Yeah. Wow. Huh. That's interesting. (laughs) You know, I've had a lot of people ask me why they dream about their deceased pets. And I think that sometimes it's an opportunity, like anytime you dream about someone or something that you've lost that was precious to you, you know, whether it was a pet or, you know, a family member or a close friend or something like that. When you dream about them, it gives you an opportunity to revisit them, to grieve sometimes. That's what the dream is doing. But instead of some people react to that and they they're so incredible.
incredulous about it, that they won't just let the moment play out. You know, I say, look, this is an opportunity to revisit someone that you lost or, you know, your pet that you lost. So just enjoy it. Don't question it. Just spend some time together. It's a fully realistic scenario simulation for you. So go ahead and enjoy it. Don't question it. Okay, so, I'm going to pop in for another death dream. Okay, Sandra. Okay, since we're kind of on the death dream thing. Okay, uh, after my mom died, my mom and I were super, super close, like sisters, mothers, you know, talk every day kind of thing. Yeah. So she passes away from breast cancer after a long illness. And I have and have been having for, for over two years now recurrent dreams that always include a blue butterfly. And the blue butterfly, like when she first died, she was talking to me as this like blue butterfly that was flying away in the distance. And then other times I've, you know, gone to sleep and dreamed about her and there's the recurrent blue butterfly. And then it manifests now when I walk in the park, whenever I think of my mom, there's these little bluebirds that follow along with me and they hop from tree to tree and my park is square. So there's no way the birds can just walk with me, but they do. It's really strange. So I, I, <laughs> I just huh. want to know what's with the blue butterfly. Well, I would ask first if the color blue or butterflies or something about them combined together was meaningful to you and your mom. Did she no. wear the color blue a lot? Did she? Well, uh, she was blonde, so she wore blue, but it wasn't like blue was her signature color. Her she signature. wore all colors. Huh. And butterflies were nothing like it's not like she had butterflies in her house or a butterfly blanket believe me i've, I've right. scraped through my things going where the hell does the butterfly come from huh well you know um it, what it brings to mind to me is like the lightness of being that you know it's a symbol for being able to leave you know she you said she had a protracted illness and it was probably hard on i mean especially on her but it was probably hard on everyone too and after an experience like that there's a heaviness that's on you and you know butterflies are as light as air and they can just kind of float away so uh, combined with the synchronous experience with the birds following you around i would interpret that as your mom's telling you that she's okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause that's, yeah, I, I, I hope, you know, that that's what I've always hoped, you know, that it was okay. Cause I'll see these weird butterflies randomly, you know, a blue butterfly in a tapestry somewhere in a church, like, you know, not appropriate, you know, if it was like a big cross, I would expect to see a big cross in a church, yeah. but you know, I'll see like random weird little butterflies places. And then I feel good. Like I feel happy. And, um, I started to collect them in my house. Like if I see something at the store, I'll pick it up a little blue butterfly. So thank you for validating that, that, that's my mom coming through because that's what I thought, you know, that's, that's what, what it felt, felt like. Too. Yeah. 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 I tell people to interpret dreams in a way that empowers them. You know, sometimes there are hard messages that are in dreams and you might be trying to avoid them and, you know, but other times with dreams there, really it's how you feel about the dream is what's most important and how you interpret it. And if you take something like that as a sign from being from her, that she's telling you that she's okay and you can live your life and be okay and everything's all right, then interpret it that way. I know from experience, though, having interpreted thousands of dreams and having studied people like Edgar Cayce um, and being familiar with the phenomena of synchronicity, that there are ways that the living and the deceased communicate with each other. And dreams are one way and also coincidences. But they're not just coincidences. They're meaningful coincidences. Um, they're synchronicity, as Carl Jung called them. So one dream that I had shortly after my mom died that that stuck with me, like really stuck with me, is I was in a huge hall and, you know, it was really tall and it was wood, almost like a courthouse, but it was beautiful, like a more like a chapel, but it was a big hallway and uh -huh. there was wood on both sides. And I looked, because I woke up laughing during this dream, I looked at my mom and I said, how is it? I can see you. And she's like, I know, I can see you too. And we were like hugging and laughing. And then I woke up. Hmm. 
you know, does that, I mean, does our mind play tricks on us or do we go places? Like, you know, Linda was talking about that, like going places in dreams and it was so real, JM. Yeah. I mean, I can yeah. still think back two years ago and I can, I can see it and I can feel it and I can see my mom and she was so happy and I was so happy to see her. Um, a lot of times you know, it's, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. I well, would rather hear what you have to say. A lot of times it's symbolism, but here's one of the ways that you can tell the difference is when a dream character is playing a role in your dream, it means there it's just a figment of your mind. And it, when, when that's the case, they will act like an actor on stage. And when you get them outside of their lines, you know, the role that they're playing, then the facade of intelligence drops from them. They're almost like dumb. They don't know what to do. But when you run across a dream character and it's like your deceased mom and you're wondering, is this something my mind is made up or am I actually making spiritual contact with her? You'll be able to tell by looking in their eyes, by the feeling of the person and by the fact that they have their own agenda. They're not just there playing a role like an actor on a stage. It is the person. They have their own agenda and they have an intelligence to them that you don't find in other dream characters. And what I found is that's one of the ways of being able to discern between the product of your mind, a, a dream character that's purely just part of your imagination and actually making spiritual contact with another being, whether living or dead, and that they are communicating with you. So I would say, you know, what it sounds like to me, Sandra, is that you had a really incredible relationship with your mom. You've been able to deal with her passing um, and that you are in the right emotionally balanced state to be able to establish that line of communication with her. It's not to say that every dream you have with her is going to be a contact with the beyond dream. But from what you've told me and from what I've learned about you here today, I would say that it's very likely that you're actually communicating with her. Beats a whole bucket of crazy. Boy, sure I love yeah, that. That's great. That's great. Yeah, <laughs> well, this was something you. that I was kind of I was I was closed off to because I'm a conventional dream interpreter, and I was oh my mind was open to this by Edgar Casey. There is there are extensive records of him interpreting dreams that were uh, multiple dreams from the same people that were about contact between you know between the living and the people who've passed on who are their loved ones and. Before I read Casey, I was a little on the I was on the fence about the subject, but after reading so many accounts of it and then interpreting so many dreams that were about this subject, I've come around to say I'm convinced of it. I don't just believe in it. I'm convinced of it. I've seen enough evidence and heard from enough authoritative people on the subject that I really think that it happens. Yeah, I do too. And it's something that you know. You just you know it. You know it in your feelings. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, I have a new. I have another book that's coming out. Um, it's not actually in publishable form yet. But this is those topics that I'm addressing. I call it strange dreams. And one of the chapters is about dreams with the deceased and how to tell the difference. I give a few examples of dreams that really appear to be about contact with beyond, but really what it is is a wish fulfillment. They they were missing their loved ones so badly that their dream created a simulation and said, here, I'm going to give you a chance to visit with them in a holographic sort of scenario. And then I've run across other dreams that were undoubtedly, uh, that were undoubtedly contacted. With you. So I don't know wow. if we have time, but you, uh, Sandra, you told me about a dream that your son had that was very interesting. I did. And you know what? It's, we got one minute to air or one minute left in the show. So we're okay. going to have to bring you back and we're going to talk okay. about the dream my son had about the bees buzzing in his head or yeah. on top of his head. But we're going to have to save that for another show. JM oh. DeBoard, you were awesome. The hour flew by. I've had so much fun with you. I know Me Linda, too. you had a great time too. Absolutely. Uh, Me too. This is Powered Up Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Linda Franklin. And our guest today was J.M. DeBoard. You guys are going to want to get his book for sure because it's Dreams 1, 2, 3. And when you have that new book coming out, J.M., you absolutely have to come back. you got to come back anyway. But you got to come back and, and talk about that show. And check him out on Reddit. That's R-E-D-D-I-T. He's the dream expert on Reddit.com. J.M. DeBoard. to dreams.reddit.com will take you directly to to my area that I'm the moderator at, just to let your listeners know. Excellent. 
Casey, go ahead and take us out. We're so glad you joined us for Powered Up with Beck and Franklin. Sandra Beck, Los Angeles-based single mother and technology company owner, knows what it's like to be fit, funny, and fantastic in your 40s. Linda Franklin, a New Yorker with a successful marriage and prom-